Hello everyone and welcome! For me, Christmas came very early this year as the lovely people over at Grabby reached out and asked if I wanted to test out their brand new watercolour travel set and of course I said yes. A little bit later in this video we're going to use what's in this box to colour a little Johanna Basford Christmas motif so make sure you stay tuned. So the kit arrives in this lovely little box so let's take a little look at what's inside. Inside this handy little pouch which fits perfectly into your pocket by the way you will find a pencil sharpener a nice and soft little white eraser perfect for erasing your sort of pencil outlines this handy little swatching card so you can test out all your colors and a mini block of watercolor paper perfect for all your teeny tiny little projects a foldable paintbrush i really like this so it just screws open and then you can screw the end onto the other end and that way you have a nice long paintbrush which fits perfectly in your hand and then of course you're going to find this 12 piece half pan watercolor set which folds out like this and gives you plenty of space to blend your colors and inside this little holder here is a nifty little graphite pencil which is going to be perfect for sketching out your work before you use your black pen to outline it properly ready to test all of these out so let's get swatching so I'm going to use this little paintbrush I have grabbed a little bowl of water here and we're going to start just the same way that the colors appear in the box now what you will find that is that each of the rectangles aligns with the colors the same way that they're lined up in the box which makes swatching a whole lot easier as there's no risk of accidentally labeling the colors with the wrong color name so i'm just going to have a bit of a play around here just to see how it sort of lies down in that blending area so i'm just sort of turning the little swatch chart around there and you can see what i mean about how it aligns So the first color here is called lemony yellow so I just want to add a lot of pigment first and I'm just going to use a little bit of water and I'm just going to blend it down a little bit just to sort of see the different we can sort of the different shades we can get or the tint 
we can uh, get these colors. I'm just giving it a good rinse and I'm gonna go on to our cadmium orange. So far I am loving the saturation of these colours. They go down really really nicely. So the swatch sheet here is actually made of the same watercolour paper that the little pad is made out of. So this will give you an exact visual of what these colours are going to look like when you put them down on paper. Which is very very handy. And after we've done this swatching, I'm going to go ahead and do some blending as well, just for a bit of fun.
I've brought out my own larger watercolour pad as I want to have a little bit of a play around with some blending before we get colouring. I just wanted to show you that even though you only have 12 colours on hand, you can blend this into as many more colours that you can possibly think of. So let's just test this out. So I'm just going to go in and make some little orangey tones here. So we have a pretty bright orange already, but let's get one that's sort of a, a much lighter tone in between your yellow and your orange. So as you can see, it's much lighter than the cadmium orange there. And we could probably even add, you can add more or less of the red or the yellow or the orange and just sort of keep blending. So just sort of blending in more red in this and let's see what we can get. I'm just adding a little bit more water, a little bit more red. So kind of making this into maybe a little bit more of like a scarlet kind of red. That is, I find the scarlet red has got quite a fair bit of orange in them. Probably, this is probably a little bit more like a burnt orange, I think. It's quite quite dark, um, but it's, it's actually darker than, much darker than the, um, the cadmium orange. And then of course you can add more water in and you can blend it out so that you still have the same sort of shade of colour but the tint is much lighter. play with the yellow and I want to add a little bit of this um, it's like a burnt umber sort of color and I'm just gonna add a little bit to it just to give it almost a little bit of an ochre kind of tone so as you can see we're getting a really sort of if I could compare it to like your Faber Castell polychromos it's a bit like the Naples you have the Naples yellow and the Naples ochre it's a bit more similar to those and it's more of an earthy kind of yellow when you add in that brown tone to it. Just adding in a little bit more of the red and orange there and then we get this sort of almost like an earthy sort of orange tone to it. So you can you can have a play around with all of these colours and just sort of add in little bits here and there to either make them more earthy, more muted and so on and so on. So I want to see if we can get more of a, maybe like a lavender sort of colour. So I'm going to go in a little bit with this sort of, I think it was called pink rose or something. I think it's, yeah, actually I think it's just called rose. And I'm going to add in a tiny little bit of blue on the side here. I'm just going to do a bit of a mix up and I'll see if we get like a violet-y, maybe like a lavender sort of tone.
gonna move into even more cooler tones now. I'm gonna do, I wanna do like a sort of bluish green. I wanna see what we can get out of this, especially if you're doing like underwater scenes and even some sort of like Christmassy things you do. If you're doing like mistletoe and things like that, you often want a more blue green rather than a really, really bright um, yellow green tones. So let's have a look, see what we get when we mix these two together. And again, the more or less you put of one color, it's going to completely change the color that you're going to get. So you have so many possibilities, even though you're only starting out with 12 of these base colors. Enough swatching for now, it is time to give the rest of this kit a try. And to do that I've decided to make a little Christmas stocking following the tutorial by Johanna Basford over on her YouTube page. This little watercolour pad is perfect for small motifs and today I'm going to cut this little page in half which makes for a perfect tag for your Christmas presents. Now I will speed up the drawing part of this as I would love for you all to go ahead and head over to Johanna's YouTube channel and watch the Christmas Inky Art School so you can learn to do these drawings for yourself. sketching out your little motif you can go ahead and take out that little black pencil not pencil pen, um, pen and you can go ahead and ink your picture so you can add in some little details I'm making the top a little bit sort of furry adding in some stripes and little zigzags here and there again if you go over onto Johanna Basford's YouTube page you will get a really good in-depth tutorial on how to do these little stockings as well as lots of other little Christmas motifs. When your ink is completely dry you can go ahead and erase the graphite using the little eraser that came with your kit. So now that I've finished drawing and inking, it is time to go ahead and paint this stocking. Now, I am a definitely not an expert on watercolors. My usual medium, as you know, are colored pencils, but let's have a little bit of fun anyway. So what I wanna do is go in with fairly traditional tones with this, but first I wanna do a bit of a was like a slightly creamy color just for the white details so I'm just bringing in my white here and then I'm going to go ahead and add just a touch of yellow to this it will become really really pale because I've got all of that white down already 
but it should give me just a tiny bit of color just to add to my little white details I like the fur on top of that stocking watercolors what you can do to add a little bit of sort of highlights and shadows is to add a little bit more pigment with not so much water just wherever you want your darker areas to be so I'm just sort of bringing in a little bit more of that red and I'm just layering it down the bottom here where the sock sort of the stocking kind of curves around a little bit and I'll probably go in and we'll add in we'll do a little bit of stuff with our paints gray as well to add a little bit of shadow to our white areas once we get the, them all done
just taking a little bit of that paints gray and I'm mixing it in with some of this cream color that I've already got just to really really lighten it up once I got that because my white areas here are already um, wet I'm just gonna kind of dab it down and I'm just gonna let that water that wet area kind of just pull it up a little bit just naturally you can kind of see that it spreads out just a little bit and goes into the rest of these wet areas this top here is already dry so you will see I'm, I'm going in a little bit more gentle I'm kind of just dabbing a little bit just to give a little bit of shadow where this sort of furry part kind of curves in underneath So I started with the little presents here and I ended up going in with like these sort of pinky purpley tones and I ended up actually changing all of that into more red so just maybe if you are following along with some of your own colors maybe just wait a little bit before you sort of add start adding in colors because I did end up removing some of this by adding more water to it which will help you lift it off of the paper obviously some will still be left but then I ended up going over it with more red tones of this one here and the other present I ended up going in with green tones over the top.
So at this point I decided not to go ahead with what I was thinking and off camera I just removed some of the pigment on especially that left, no the right parcel. So you can see there's hardly any pigment left on that and now I'm just adding the green tones instead. the bottom parts are dry I can add in a little bit more shadows here without worrying about it sort of going into the other colors so I'm just going in here again again with that little bit of that light gray tones and just making sure we have a little bit of depth here For the background, as you can see, I've used a really, really watery red. I just added lots and lots and lots of water to it. And that will sort of make it as transparent as I possibly can. You'll probably find it hard to see it on camera, but you can definitely see it with the naked eye when you're sort of doing it yourself. It just gives that little bit of a tint to the, um, the paper, just so it's not so boring kind of thing if you want on the background it's just not plain paper it just gives it a little bit of something i also ended up drawing in some lines on either side of the little tag just to frame it a little bit i didn't film drawing those lines but you'll see it on the end shot Because I didn't completely center this little stocking I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut it down just a little bit further just to make sure it looks nice and centered then I'm gonna draw on those lines that I mentioned and then we are finished and there you go 
I've had so much fun making this little gift tag. The watercolours are lovely and pigmented and they go down beautifully on the paper. And if you would like to try them out for yourself, just follow the link in the description box. And if you add the code MARIT15, you will enjoy 15% off any purchase you make from Grabby's website. I thank you all so much for watching. I wish you a colorful day and I will see you again next time.